welcome to the Spice Rack. I'm Shannon Spicer and I'd like to add a little spice to your quilting. Today I'll be putting together the Dutchman's Puzzle Block. I love the windmill effect this design has. This block is the one I put together to test out my math and it was made with flying geese units. But today I'm going to put one together using half square triangles. I took a poll online and found out out of about 60 quilters, it was split right down the middle as to the people who prefer flying geese and the people who prefer half square triangles. I feel half square triangles are easier for a beginner, so that is what I'm going to show here. But in the pattern, I show both methods, which you can download by clicking on the link below in the description. I'm going to be making mine today with two solids. This is a Motobella, and I'm not quite sure what color it is, and this is Kona Cotton in Bone. The method I'm going to use is the same as last week's method, so I'm going to show footage from that, where it's a four at a time method for half square triangles. You put right sides together of your two squares, and you sew quarter inch seam all the way around the perimeter, and then you cut them in pieces. And I'll show you, I'll show you that footage from last week, which will be a mustard color and cream color and then I'll get back to this color when I assemble them. Okay, here we have all four of our items that are sewed all the way around the edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. So they're completely closed. You don't typically do that in quilting, but these are closed because we're going to cut them apart. I will line up my ruler from point to point and you want to make sure you're in a position where you can move your ruler the opposite way because we're going to cut one way and then the other way. My blade is in, so I'm not going to cut my fingers. You want to position your piece so that you can cut one way and the other without shifting and moving your piece. So I'm going to cut this way. And then without moving the piece, I'm going to move the ruler and line it up on the opposite points. So now we have four pieces. And then we will press these open. And we will have our little half square triangles. Okay, now we have all the half square triangles pressed open and we're going to trim them. So for trimming these, the best tip is to line up this middle line, which is a 45 degree angle line, with the 45 degree angle line on your square ruler. And you trim a little off this side, and then you turn around, and you line it up again, and you trim off a little on this side. I usually try to put it in the middle. I don't line it up exactly with the size that I want, because I want to be able to trim both sides. So I'm lining up that center line, and this is a little bigger than I want it, but I'm going to trim off the top and the side. And then I'm going to flip it around and make it the size I need it to be. There, perfect. And these should come to a point on each side. There shouldn't be any margin with these. Sometimes with a piece you want a quarter inch margin, but not with half square triangles. Okay, so here we have all of our half square triangles, all trimmed and all laid out. This is in the design of the Dutchman's puzzle. And with the half square triangles then, we can actually lay it out either way we want. If we want the light side to be the windmill, or if we want to reverse it and do the dark fabric as the windmill. And I think I'm going to go ahead and sew this together with the dark fabric as the windmill. I think it accentuates that blue a little more, which is what I'm wanting. Now you can assemble this the traditional way if you'd like by piecing each row one at a time together and then attaching your rows together, which is the way we did last week's block, but I mentioned last week that I'm going to do this one a little bit differently. I'm actually going to piece each pair of half square triangles together to be a flying geese unit first, and with that 
I can go ahead and chain piece all of them because they're all facing the same direction. So I can just do them all, chain piece, and then move on to the next step. And the next step for me after I've chain piece all of the pairs together into, ha into flying geese units is to then to take two flying geese units and sew them together into a small block. So we'll have four of those small blocks. This is chain piecing. I fed one pair of half square triangles into the machine and I didn't snip the thread and I just fed another one through and another one and another one and I just kept going so they're all connected in a big chain. And then I will just take my little snipper scissors and snip them apart. And then we will press them open and it will be a flying geese unit. As I mentioned last week, this Taylor's Clapper is one of my favorite tools along with this wool pressing mat. I press these seams open and then I hold the iron on it for a bit, I don't know, maybe five seconds, maybe ten, and then I put the Taylor's, Taylor's Clapper on top to hold it. And I actually build up a whole stack of these. I'll iron, press one, put it on the stack, put the Taylor's Clapper, and then while I'm pressing the next one, I just leave it there and then I keep adding to the pile and putting the Taylor's Clapper on every time so it just holds all of them down. So they all end up nice and flat like this. I'll put a link in the description below to these items. Now like I said before we're going to take two of these flying geese units and we're going to sew those together to, to end up with four blocks that look like this and then we'll arrange those blocks into the Dutchman's puzzle. And don't stress if your points are not exactly perfect. This one looks like it might be a little off to me. I don't know. I saw several that might be the tiniest bit off. Oh, there's one. I'll show it up close to you. But you know what? Once it's in the quilt, once it's all quilted over, it's washed, it's dried, it's all wrinkly and cozy, no one's going to notice that. Finished is better than perfect. Just do your best and love the result. These are also units that you can chain piece. I try to chain piece as often as I possibly can. These were all the same, so I just stacked them up, put them next to my machine, and fed them through one at a time and didn't snip. So now I'll snip them apart and press them open. Oh, and it was really handy that I pressed these seams open because as I matched the two up, I didn't have to worry about which direction they were going for nesting. They're both flat and open. I'm going to do the same thing with this seam and pretty sure I'm going to do the same thing with this seam and iron it open. Okay, so now we have four little blocks of two flying geese units and we will arrange them according to the pattern design. Each one, this is like the rail fence where each one is a 90 degree turn from the last one if you're going clockwise. Now, I will say it again, and I'll probably keep saying it all throughout all my videos. Don't stress about your mistakes. I see a little piece there that where my point didn't quite match up, and I'm not too thrilled about it, but it's not worth unpicking. I hate my seam ripper. I only use it when I absolutely have to. <laughs> so now we will assemble this the traditional way, where we would do these two together and these two bottom ones together, and then once the top row is complete, attach it to the bottom row. And I did end up pressing my seams open on that section as well. Okay, there you have it, a complete Dutchman's puzzle block. Whether you want to use flying geese units or half square triangles, either way, you can assemble it pretty quickly and easily. And I hope if this was your first time making half square triangles, I explained the method clearly. And I hope it's a new item, a new skill for your repertoire. 
So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You can download the pattern using the link in the description below. This is block number four in a 12 block series I'm calling the Spice Rack Sampler. You can read all about it on my blog and see all 12 designs. If you'd like to see the other blocks in this series I've done so far, you can visit my channel. To be alerted when next week's pattern comes out, sign up for my newsletter by following the link in the description. Next week we're going to make an Empire Star block. Thank you for watching!